Hello everyone, we are starting with the February 2023 paper. There is only one variant, which is the second variant, and we are starting with the first question. Anita carried out a survey of 140 randomly selected students at her college. So first of all, let's underline 140. She found that 49 of these students watched a TV program called Bunch. The first part, calculate an approximate 98% confidence interval for the proportion fee of students at Anita's college who watch this particular program. So let's start with the working. This question is about confidence interval for population proportion. The formula is PS plus minus Z square root PS QS over N. So let's calculate each term over here. PS stands for proportion of success, which is 49 out of 140. Let's use a calculator and this comes out to be 0 0.35. Now we know that proportion of success plus proportion of failure should add up to 1 because it's either success or failure. So therefore QS is 1 minus PS, which is 1 minus 0 0.35 which comes out to be 0 0.65. We also have the value of n which is 140. Now what is left? We have to calculate the value of z. Now it's a 98% symmetric confidence interval. So 98% lies in the middle and then we are left with 1% on the left and 1% on the right. So therefore, this Z value is read for 99%. So from the strip in the Z table, using 99% probability, we get the Z value as 2.326. So now everything is ready and all we have to do is to evaluate. So therefore, 0 0.35 plus minus 2.326 and inside the square root, we have 0 0.35 multiplying with 0 0.65 divided by 140. Naturally, we have to use the calculator. This comes out to be 0 0.35 plus minus 0 0.09376. I'm working in four significant figures. So there is a smaller value. There is a bigger value. The smaller value is obtained using the negative sign in the middle and it comes out to be 0.25624 and the bigger value is obtained by using the positive sign it comes out to be 0.44376 now don't forget to round it off to three significant figures so this value comes out to be 0.256 and this value comes out to be 0.444 this is the lower bound this is the upper bound for the symmetric confidence interval for population proportion. Now let's read the last part. Carlos says that the confidence interval found in part A is not useful because it is too wide. Without calculation, explain briefly how Carlos can use the results of Anita's survey to find a narrower confidence interval. Now first of all, look at the formula. It's PS plus minus Z square root PS QS over n. Now if we focus on this part over here, this can be made smaller if the value of z is smaller or if the value of n is bigger. So let's make z small. How can we make z small? By taking the percentage that we use for confidence interval to be smaller. Maybe instead of 98%, if I take 95%, so my Z value for 95% is coming out to be 1.96. Naturally, the calculation that we have done over here, because of a smaller Z value, this value will become smaller and therefore the width will become smaller because width is upper minus lower or it's two times this particular value because that's the width formula. So let me also write down the width formula for confidence interval that is 2z square root ps qs over n. 
that's one of the way or we can say if we take a larger sample so a larger sample means the denominator will be bigger and this whole fraction will be smaller so that's another way in which the width can be made narrower so we have completed this particular question in approximately five minutes let's start with the second question February 2023, paper 62, question number 2. The number of orders arriving at the shop during an 8-hour working day is modeled by a random variable x with distribution Poisson 25.2. Let's start the process of underlining. First of all, for a 8-hour working day, the distribution is having a mean of 25.2. And this is the number of orders. The first part, state two assumptions that are required for the Poisson model to be valid in this context. Now we know that in order for a distribution to be labeled as a Poisson distribution, there are four conditions that should be fulfilled. All these conditions are about the mean number of occurrences. What do we mean by mean number of occurrences? In this context, it's the number of orders or the number of phone call receives or something like that. So now, first of all, it's about being random. The second one is singly. The third one is independent. And the fourth one is concentrate. Now, this I just recalled from my memory. But when we have to write it, we have to write about any two of them in the context of this question. That is the main thing. So I can say that the number of orders, they are arriving independent of one another. So let me write it like this. That is the first condition that I've written. Condition, assumption, it means the same thing. Now I can pick any one of these either random or singly or constant rate so let me uh, pick up constant rate that means the number of orders they are coming in at a constant rate and that's how you will earn two marks by not only recalling the right condition but writing in the context of this question now let's move on the question further says Find the probability that the number of orders that arrive in a randomly chosen 3-hour period is between 3 and 5 inclusive. Now, first of all, based upon the constant rate, we have hours and we have number of orders. Some basic everyday math. In 8 hours, 25.2 is the number of order, the average number of orders. Therefore, in 3, let me write this value to be x. So if I do the calculation, x into 8 is 25.2 multiplying with 3. Let's make x the subject. So we get the value as 9.45. Now my calculation will be based upon 9.45. x follows a Poisson distribution with 9.45. And we are interested in finding the probability between 3 and 5 inclusive. So probability x lying between 3 and 5. So we will write the formula e raised to power of negative 9.45 and this is 9.45 raised to power of 3 divided by 3 factorial. 9.45 raised to power of 4 over 4 factorial and 9.45 raised to power of 5 over 5 factorial. And you have to use the calculator. You can either evaluate this separately and this separately and then multiply it out or you can put everything in the calculator just keep track of the brackets as long as you have shown this step over here the examiner is all happy with it so now when we evaluate the answer is coming out to be 0 0.0866 i have written this answer after the simplification after the approximation to three significant figure so always mention the level of accuracy, the general level, unless otherwise stated, is 3 is if. Let's move to the next part. Now the question says, find the probability in two randomly chosen one hour period. Now, another time issue. So we have time in hours. 
and we have number of orders. So therefore, in 8 hours, we are getting 25.2 orders. Therefore, in 1 hour, we are getting x. So the value of x comes out to be 3. 0.15 that's the average number of orders in a chosen one hour period now let me write two separate distribution x follows a poisson distribution with 3.15 let me write y follows a poisson distribution with 3.15 that's exactly the same thing just for simplification purposes i'm writing it separately exactly one order will arrive in one of the one hour period so exactly one order probability x is equals to 1 e raised to power of negative 3.15, 3.15 raised to power of 1 over 1 factorial. I'll evaluate at the very end. And what is the other one? At least two orders will arrive in the other one hour period. So at least two orders, that means probability y is greater than or equal to 2, which is 1 minus probability y is lesser than or equal to 1. So, which is 1 minus e raised to power of negative 3.15 and then I'll write 1 plus 3.15 power 1 over 1 factorial. So, now this is the other calculation that's done. And what is the word that connects the two? That is this word over here which is and. That means we have to multiply these two probabilities because this is happening and this is also happening. So therefore, the final probability that we should be calculating and we are calculating, that is e raised to power of negative 3.15 into 3.15. This is in the first bracket and this value over here, 1 minus e raised to power of negative 3.15, 1 plus 3.15 bracket close and this final answer is coming out to be 0.2. To 2 given to 3 significant figure. Now let's move on to the next part and that is the last part. Now the question says the shop can only deal with a maximum of 120 orders during any 36 hour period. So the maximum number of orders is 120 and this is during a 36 hour period. Now the question says use a suitable approximating distribution to find the probability that in a randomly chosen 36 hour period there will be too many orders for the shop to deal with. Now this is connected with this. It means if the number of order is greater than 120, the shop cannot deal with it. So now first of all, let's do the time calculation once again. So time is in hours and number of orders are there. So we know that in an 8 hour period, we were getting 25.2 orders, that's the average. Therefore, in 36 hours, let me write y over here. So the value of y is calculated and this is coming out to be 113.4 by ratio proportion method. So this is the number of orders. Now we have to use an approximation. The number of orders is the mean number of occurrences and we use the symbol lambda for that. Now the rule is lambda is associated with Poisson distribution. The whole question is about the Poisson scenario but since lambda is greater than 15 we say that x now follows a normal distribution lambda comma lambda. So this is the mean number of occurrence. Now it will be following a normal distribution. So x follows a normal distribution 113.4 comma 113.4. This is the mean and this is the variance. The property of Poisson distribution is that the mean and variance is exactly the same. Now we are interested in calculating this probability but don't forget continuity correction. So probability x is greater than 120. Draw a number line. This is 120. This is 120.5, this is 119.5, greater than 120 could be either one of these values. Why do we use continuity correction? Because Poisson distribution is discrete, there is normal distribution is continuous. So whenever we go this way, 
and that's the only way that you can go from a discrete to a continuous we always use continuity correction cc so let's use this value which is 120.5 the rest is just basic standardization probability x is greater than 120.5 probability z is greater than 120.5 minus 113.4 divided by square root of 113.4 let's take out the calculator standardize it probability z is greater than 0.667 which is 1 minus pi of 0.667 that means we have to go to the z table read of the probability which is coming out to be 1 minus 0.7477 this is from the table and after subtraction it's 0.25 to 3 therefore the final answer correct to 3 significant figure is 0.252 so always mention the level of accuracy that's how this question is completed in 10 minutes february 2023 the second variant question number three the diagram shows the graph of a probability density function pdf of a random variable x that takes values between 0 and 3 only the question further says the graph is symmetrical about the line x is equals to 1.5. So let me draw a line at 1.5, a vertical line. And because of symmetry, it resembles a normal distribution curve. And we know the rule that for any distribution which is symmetric, the expected value is the mid value of the two endpoints, which in this case is 1.5 and it's also equals to the median. Why? Because 50% of the distribution lies below the median, 50% lies above it. Now let's read the question further. Part A, it is given that probability x is less than 0.6 is A. So let me highlight this. So this is 0.6 over here and lesser than this, this probability over here, this is denoted by A and probability x lying between 0.6 and 1.2 is denoted by b so over here this region between 0.6 and 1.2 it is denoted by b now the question is asking find probability x lying between 0.6 and 1.8 now first let me label 1.8 over here so approximately somewhere over here is 1.8 so let me write 1.8 over here. Now let's make use of symmetry. 0 till 1.2, this is 1.2 units. From 1.8 till 3, this is also 1.2 units. So therefore, this probability is an exact replica of the sum of these two. So therefore, this is also A plus B. Therefore, we are interested in finding from 0 0.6 all the way till 1.8. So 0 0.6 till 1.8, let's do a bit more of calculation. That is the probability over here. Let me write this thing as Q. So this is A, this is B, this is A, this is B, and this is Q. So Q plus 2A plus 2B equals to 1. Therefore, Q is 1 minus 2A minus 2B. That is how much this is. And I am interested between 0 0.6 and 1.8. So 0 0.6 till 1.2 is B and let me add Q to it. So therefore, this is B plus 1 minus 2A minus 2B. So this B and this negative 2B simplifies. So this is 1 minus 2A minus B. That is the answer for this particular part. So that's how this particular question is completed. Let's move to the next part. Now the question says, it is now given that the equation of the PDF is this, it's a quadratic curve and it lies between 0 and 3 where k is a constant, show that k is this much. So what do we do? We integrate this function, that is k, and let's first multiply x square into 3 minus x whole square, which is x square into 9 minus 6x plus x square, and let me further multiply it with x. So this multiplies to 9x square minus 6x cube plus x4. 
and we are integrating it between the limits 0 and 3. It's written right over here. It was also in the diagram. And now we are equating it to 1. So now it's some basic pure maths that we have to do. So let's keep k on the outside. 9x square becomes 9x cube over 3 minus 6x power 4 over 4 plus x power 5 over 5 between the limits 0 and 3 equal it to 1. Now first let's assess the situation. When I'll be putting in the lower limit all these three terms will disappear. They will all become 0. So basically all I have to do is to plug in this 3 wherever there is x. So let me just write k and 9 over 3 is 3 and x cube is 3 raised to power of 3. Minus 3 over 2, 3 raised to power of 4 plus 3 raised to power of 5 divided by 5 and it's equaling it to 1 and naturally I have to use simplification using a calculator or without using a calculator and the value of k comes out to be 10 over 81. So this part is completed. Now what's the next part? Now we have to find the variance of x. Now what's the formula for variance? Variance of x is expectation of x square minus square of expectation of x. We have already observed from the diagram because it's a symmetric distribution expectation of x is 1.5. So therefore we need to evaluate expectation of x square. Therefore expectation of x square is integrating between the limits 0 and 3. k is there. Yes we have found the value of k to be 10 over 81 and now we are multiplying x square with the function itself. Now what is the function? The function is right over here. 9x square minus 6x cubed plus x power 4. So this is 9x square minus 6x cubed plus x power 4. Now first we have to multiply then we have to integrate. So k is still there which is 10 over 81. Limits are 0 and 3. When I multiply it out x square into 9x square that is 9x power 4 minus 6x power 5 plus x power 6 and now we have to integrate it. So 10 over 81 is there and then this is 9x power 5 over 5 minus 6x power 6 over 6 plus x power 7 over 7 between the limits 0 and 3. Again, when I'll be plugging in the lower limit, all these three terms will become zero. So all I have to do is to plug in the upper limit. Yes, I can move a little bit wisely by writing this thing as 10 over 81 and then taking x to the power 5 common out. So this is x power 5 and this is 9 over 5 minus x. The 2, 6 will cancel out and this is x raised to power of 2 over 7 and this is between the limits 0 and 3. So let me just do a little bit of extra working and then we have x power 5 which is 3 power 5 then 9 over 5 minus 3 plus 3 raised to power of 2 over 7 and now you have to evaluate and this value is coming out to be 18 over 7. So now let's calculate the variance of x which is expectation of x square which is 18 over 7 minus 1.5 square let me write it as a fraction so this is 3 over 2 square so this is 18 over 7 minus 9 over 4 so we have a 28 over here 18 gets multiplied with 4 9 gets multiplied with 7 and it simplifies and we get the answer as 9 over 28 leave the answer in the fractional form so that's how this question is completed in 8 minutes. February 2023, paper 62, question number 4. The number of accidents per 3 month period on a certain road has the distribution Poisson with the mean number of occurrence lambda. In the past, the value of lambda has been 5.7. Following some changes to the road, the council carries out a hypothesis test to determine whether the value of lambda has decreased. Maybe they have put in a warning sign and they want the number of accidents to decrease. If there are fewer than three accidents in a randomly chosen three month period, the council will conclude that the value of lambda has decreased. Now, first of all, it's about the number of accidents. The time period is three months all along. 
and the distribution is Poisson. Now the value of lambda is 5.7. So let me write over here, x follows a Poisson distribution with 5.7. What else is there? The changes are there and the objective is to check whether lambda has decreased. So let me write h naught, the null hypothesis, lambda equals to 5.7 and h1, the alternative hypothesis, lambda is lesser than 5.7. Now, what is this particular statement? If there are fewer than three accidents in a randomly chosen three month period, the council will conclude that the value of lambda has decreased. This is the critical region. What do we mean by critical region? Another name is rejection region. That is, what is the range for which we will be rejecting H0? So therefore, let me write the definition of type one error reject h0 when h0 is true and when do we reject h0 when we are calculating the probability of x is lesser than 3 which will be written as x is lesser than or equal to 2 so this is e raised to power of negative 5.7 and this is 1 plus 5.7 power 1 over 1 factorial 5.7 power 2 over 2 factorial and we have to use the calculator naturally and this is coming out to be 0 0.0768 this is the probability of type 1 error now let's move on to the next part the question says find the probability of a type 2 error if the mean number of accidents per three month period is now actually 0 0.9 so probability of type 2 when the true value of lambda is 0 0.9 now the critical region is x is lesser than or equal to 2. Therefore the acceptance region is x is greater than or equal to 3. So let's calculate the probability x is greater than or equal to 3 which is all the way from 3, 4 all the way till infinity. So therefore we have to use subtraction 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to 2 which is 1 minus e raised to power of negative 0 0.9, 1 plus lambda, which is 0 0.9, and this is 0 0.9 square over 2 factorial. If you want, I can write power 1 over 1 factorial also. And this answer is coming out to be 0 0.0629. Again, this answer is given to three significant figures. Similarly, the answer that I calculated at the top that's also given correct to three significant figures. So this question is completed in less than four minutes. February 2023, paper 62, question number five. The masses in grams of large and small packets of mixed wheat cereal have the independent distributions given by such and such. They are following normal distribution, mean, variance, mean, variance respectively. So let me write down the data. First of all, large follows a normal distribution 410.0 and 3.6 square. Similarly, small follows a normal distribution 206.0 and 3.7 square. Now the first part, find the probability that a randomly chosen large packet has a mass which is more than double the mass of a randomly chosen small packet. So I'll write L is greater than 2s over here 2 means twice it's not two different packets it's twice of that so let me write the distribution for 2 times s it follows a normal distribution 2 multiplying with the mean and 2 square multiplying with the variance that has to be taken care of now this simplifies to 412 and this after multiplication 54.76 now this part is done. Now we are focusing our attention on this. That means let's transfer these variables to one side. L minus 2s is greater than 0. Let's label L minus 2s by another variable. Let me call it L minus 2s equals to m. So m is greater than 0. What is the distribution of m? m still follows the normal distribution. What will happen to the means this is 410 this is 412 there is a negative sign over here so it will be subtracted and this will become negative 2 
what happened to the variances it will be added up so after the addition it comes out to be 67.72 that's adding this with 3.6 square now we have to calculate the probability probability m is greater than 0 probability z is greater than 0 minus minus 2 divided by square root of 67.72 grab your calculator do the calculation z is greater than 0.243 now head over to the normal distribution table but first write the correct way of working it out 1 minus probability z is lesser than 0 0.243 which is 1 minus 0 0.5960 this is the probability value from the table and when we do subtraction we are getting 0 0.4040 which is easily converted to three significant figure value that's how the first part is completed now the second part the second part says the packets are placed in boxes the boxes are identical in appearance 60 percent of the boxes contain exactly 10 randomly chosen large packet now let me start underlining 60 percent contains exactly 10 randomly chosen large packet similarly 40 percent of the boxes contains exactly 20 chosen small packets now the question says find the probability that a randomly chosen box contains packets with a total mass of more than 4080 grams now the possibility is that it could all be 10 randomly chosen large packets or it could be all 20 randomly chosen small packets so let's start the calculation first of all let me denote the symbol x for 10 large packets so this is l1 all the way till l10 so let's write down the distribution for x the mean of l is multiplied with 10 the variance of l is multiplied with 10 now let me insert the value the mean is 410 and the variance is 3.6 square so therefore x now follows a normal distribution with the new values simplified that is 4100 and 129.6 similarly y is the sum of 20 randomly chosen small packets so s1 plus s2 all the way till s20 so y now follows a normal distribution 20 times the mean 20 times the variance now what is the mean the mean is 206 and the variance is 3.7 square so therefore y follows a normal distribution with 4120 and 273.8 now all this data is all completed now we have to start with the calculation the total mass has to be greater than 4080 now look at this value that means either x is greater than 4080 or y is greater than 4120 let's calculate two separate probabilities and then we will take care of the 60 percent and 40 percent so first of all we will calculate probability x is greater than 4080 probability z is greater than 4080 minus 4100 divided by square root of 129.6 this is probability z is greater than negative 1.757 which will be written as probability z is positive 1.757 and this is direct reading from the table this answer is coming out to be 0 0.9605 now let's do the calculation for y probability y is greater than 4080 probability z is greater than 4080 minus 4120 divided by square root of 273.8 probability z is greater than negative 2.417 according to the rules of normal distribution this becomes z is lesser than positive 2.417 again direct reading this comes out to be 0.9921 so now this is for x and this is for y but there is a 60 40 chance so 60 percent 
for large, 40% for small. So let's use these probabilities. Consider this like a tree diagram. So there is a 60% chance that it's for X. There is a 40% chance it's for Y. And then fulfilling the requirement that the total mass is greater than 4080 for each is taken into consideration. So therefore, let me draw a branch over here. Let me draw a branch over here. If that category is fulfilled, that probability is 0.9605. If that category is fulfilled, that's 0.9921. So basically, we take this probability, multiply with this. We take this probability, multiply with this, and then we add it up. So it's back to the basics. This is 0 0.6 into 0 0.9605, or we add 0 0.40 into 0 0.9921, and the final answer is 0 0.97314, which will be written as 0 0.973, correct to three significant figures. So that's how we have completed this question in eight minutes. 2023, February, second variant, question number six. Last year, the mean time taken by students at a school to complete a certain test was 25 minutes. Let's start underlining. So the time for completing a test last year is 25 minutes. This person, Akash, believes that the mean time taken by this year's student was less than 25 minutes. That's his belief. In order to test his belief, he takes a large random sample of this year's student and he notes that the time taken by each student. He carries out a test at the 2.5% significance level for the population mean time, mu minutes. Akash uses the null hypothesis H0 mu is equals to 25. Let me read few parts. The first part, give a reason why Akash should use a one-tailed test. And the second part, Akash finds that the value of the test statistic is negative 2.02. Explain what conclusion he should draw. Now, first of all, let's talk about why a one-tailed test. Because Akash is thinking his belief is about less than. His belief is about a decrease. So it's in one direction. Therefore, it's a one-tailed test and the alternative hypothesis will be mu is lesser than 25. Now, the second part. He finds the value of this statistic is negative 2.02. So, therefore, over here, we know that it's a lower tail test and the significance level is 2.5%. Let me draw a normal distribution curve. And let me draw the baseline. Let me mark 2.5% over here. The Z value from the table is negative 1.96. Why is it negative? Because it's a lower tail test. And we are focusing on the lower tail. And this Z value, the calculated Z value is negative 2.02. Does it lie in the critical region? Yes. Therefore, the conclusion is reject H0. Therefore, accept H1. That means we have sufficient evidence to support, to endorse the claim, the belief of Akash. So support Akash claim that the mean time is lesser than 25 minutes. Now let's move on. The next part. In a different one-tail hypothesis test, the Z value was found to be 2.14. Given that this value would lead to a rejection of the null hypothesis at the alpha person significance level, find the set of possible values of alpha. Now, first of all, Z is 2.14. If I go to the table and I do back solving and I find the corresponding probability, this probability is coming out to be 0.9838, which means that if this value is 2.14, this probability to the left is 0.9838. Therefore, the probability to the right, the smaller probability, is 0.0162. Or let me write this thing in percentage. That is 1.62%. Now, let me draw a normal distribution curve again over here. And over here, this 
is 1.62 percent and this value is 2.14 so this is the boundary value that means anything on the inside we will be rejecting h naught because we are in the critical region this is with respect to the z value and if we go deeper in the region the probability decreases now the question is basically asking what is the set of possible values that will lead to this rejection now we know that if two and a half percent significance level is taken the z value is 1.96 so if i label 1.96 over here the area in this critical region that is the probability that is two and a half percent that means if the z value is 2.14 h naught will still be rejected that means if i keep on moving to the left my percentage will be increasing so therefore the set of values for alpha is that alpha percent should be greater than or equal to 1.62 percent that is what we are looking for now let's look at the last part the last part says the population mean time taken by students at another school to complete a test last year was m minutes a person named soren carries out a one tail test to determine whether the population mean this year is less than m minutes again it's a lower tail test using a random sample of 100 students he assumes that the population standard deviation of the time is 3.9 minutes the sample mean is 24.8 minutes and the result just leads to the rejection of the null hypothesis at the 5% significance level. Find the value of m. Again, let's draw a normal distribution curve. Let me label 5% at the lower tail. So, for 5%, which is actually 95% in the other direction, the z value is 1.645. Since it's a lower tail test, let me write negative 1.645. Let me write other piece of information that is x bar follows a normal distribution m is unknown. And what else is there? The sigma is 3.9. That is the standard deviation. Square divided by 100. This is the distribution for the sample mean. Now, how do we standardize? We know that the test statistic z is x bar minus mu sigma square over n under root. So let's scroll up and see what do we have. Do we have m? What is m? That is the population mean time. So we are interested in m. And what is 24.8? That is the sample mean. So let me write things where they belong. We have the z value, which is negative 1.645. We have the x bar value, which is 24.8. And instead of mu, I'm writing m. And then sigma is 3.9. It's being squared divided by n. n is 100 and this whole square root is there. So now doing the basic calculation, negative 1.645 multiplying with 3.9 square over 100. The whole thing square root is 24.8 minus m. So let's make m the subject. So therefore, the value of m is coming out to be 25.44. Let me write this thing as 25.4, correct to three significant figures. So that's how this question is completed. And that completes the whole paper of February 2023.